How you doing everyone? Welcome to my channel. My name is Tide and today I want to talk about Dauntless. So if you haven't heard about Dauntless yet, it's a, a Monster Hunter-esque lobby RPG which basically has players hunting monsters or as they call it behemoths in their strange broken apart island world. So this game has striking similarities to Monster Hunter. You can tell that they're, they're following the same gameplay loop that Monster Hunter does, but in their own sci-fi take on it. This game's published by Epic, and they are basically on the same launcher next to Fortnite. That's going to be important later. Before I begin the game, I just want to clarify that I love Monster Hunter. Uh, I've played all the Monster Hunter games starting from 3, that was my first one. I've put hundreds of hours into the franchise in total. So I feel like I have a good understanding of how the mechanics in Monster Hunter work. So coming to this game, I felt like I could apply a lot of that knowledge. With that being said, let's get right into the game. So first we're asked to customize our character and the character customizer in this game is actually very good. Considering that you get to play with all these sliders and there are different options that pretty much fit whatever look you're trying to go for. It's interesting. I also really appreciate that the male and female hairstyles are not separated. In fact, there actually isn't a male and female option. You just pick whether you want to look masculine or feminine. You can take what you want from that. I think it's I think it's pretty funny, but hey, you know what? It gets the, the point across, and that's cool, I guess. So I went ahead and made my guy look uh, kind of like me, so I think that's, that's going to be good. And we're going to get into the game. The opening intro cutscene has you basically on a ship of some sort on your way to hunt some behemoths or monsters or whatever, you're a rookie. And obviously things go bad because that's how the beginning of every game has to start. And I think it would have been kind of cool if you actually just like did what they wanted you to do like in a normal fashion. But hey, you know, every game has to do their own spin on it. In this case, things get ugly and uh, that, guy, that guy just straight out dies. I'm pretty sure he did not survive that fall. Your character decides to be heroic and save the instructor. And unfortunately you fall off of the, the ship. So right here is the very first similarity between Monster Hunter and Dauntless, and that is that there's no fall damage. As you can see, I fell hundreds of feet, and I am A-OK -okay and ready to fight. Very familiar in my opinion. So the, the tutorial is rather robust. It does explain quite a lot of the game's mechanics, and it does allow you to kind of free play uh, with all the weapons. Um, I will say that the first four fights are not telling of this game's difficulty the lesser behemoths that you fight are incredibly easy in fact i'd say that they're near brain dead but this is good because it allows you to play with the weapons and the actual play styles that the weapons come with i decided to play around with what i thought was familiar i'm a great sword main in monster hunter so i went with this great axe and lo and behold they're exactly the same it plays the exact same way it's pretty straightforward I can't really complain too much about it, but it is pretty much a carbon clone of the Monster Hunter Greatsword. Acquiring new weapons and gear is actually pretty easy, in opposed to Monster Hunter where you're farming constantly for specific pieces. This game is a little bit more lenient with allowing you to make the armors and weapons, at least at the beginning it is. After I played around a bit more, I actually fell in love with the hammer in this game, which is honestly very cool. I like the, they kind of mix the gun lance and the hammer. And it creates this really interesting like bullet using hammer that you can like propel yourself in the air like do these big blasts and it feels good it feels very mobile and i can definitely appreciate that especially because i'm really a fan of defensive playstyles. so the first monster that actually poses a challenge is called skarn and this is where i quickly realized that finding the monster like locating it like the actual hunting part is very very bland you just kind of walk around to the areas where you would assume that you would come into contact with these monsters and they just kind of appear and then you shoot up a flare to let the rest of your party know. It's very straightforward, but it honestly when the monster runs away, which Skarn is the first monster to run away, it's really dumb trying to track them down because they don't give you any indication of which direction they went. They just have the rest of the group running around. But the game does feature a battle pass, uh, I mean hunt pass very similar to fortnite it's almost exactly the same where you get items for free and if you pay for the for the battle pass you get the exclusive item they're mostly cosmetic but it's uh it's still there and it should be noted in this video a very strange thing happened to me i decided to go up against this next monster who was kind of like an owl bear thing which i kind of think is really cool it's got an interesting take on the owl bear which is a pretty classic uh mythical beast and 
I, I couldn't find a party. Like, I queued for it, and it made a room with just me in it. And I waited the entire timer, and no one joined me. But you know what? I'm a Monster Hunter Pro. I've slain all sorts of things. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to slay this thing myself, too. But boy, boy was I wrong. This monster really gave me a run for my money. And it really taught me that this game definitely has potential. Like, despite a lot of it being very casualized, fighting these monsters on your own is very difficult. It makes me wonder if the monsters are even tuned to fight just one player. Because I feel like the other fights that I've been on, sure, players have been down. But this one, fighting this one alone was a pain. In fact, I won this match with only 10 HP remaining and no potions after having been downed once. It, it was it was difficult. It was definitely difficult. Moving on from this though, I did realize that there are subspecies. There's another version of this owl bear which I was able to find a group for. And honestly, it was pretty cool. He had like ice powers instead of like psionic powers, and I can definitely get behind that. I think it's pretty cool. Resistance types are really important in this game as well. Make sure you're wearing the proper the proper gear to resist the monster that you're going up against is incredibly important as the monsters do a lot of damage and the amount of preparation you get is very very limited you only have four slots for items opposed to your whole like satchel in monster hunter that you can like kind of fill up so what is my verdict on this game i personally feel like this game is an interesting take on the monster hunter style of gameplay where you group up with friends and you fight these behemoth monsters in hopes of getting new gear and new weapons to help you conquer even stronger monsters. A very important thing that's missing in this game, so certainly a con, is that the game doesn't feature a living, breathing like environment, kind of like Monster Hunter does where you feel like you're surviving in a forest or on a mountainside, where here it's like every, like all the islands are broken apart and you kind of just land on these shattered floating islands and it makes little sense to like how are these things a threat to the city can these monsters really leave these areas like can they jump or like can they traverse these like floating islands because we need ships to get out here it does really like detract from the experience overall i thought dauntless was a pretty good attempt at the monster hunter style considering i can't really think about another game that's done this style verbatim Dallas does a pretty good job of bringing that experience to like a very casual market and even though it does take a lot from the fortnite battle pass and the kind of drop in drop out quick 20 30 minute gameplay it it still has its own charm to it and i have to respect that i personally won't be playing it very much after how much i played it for this video but i can't argue that it's a bad game I don't know how, how much harder the game gets, and once you unlock like the bigger behemoths, the game does get considerably more fun. I will certainly be keeping an eye on it. Hopefully, some updates will bring more weapons and more styles of, of things to do. But until then, if you like this video, give me a like, give me a sub. If you uh, like my content, I'm going to be making more content like this. Thanks a lot. You can follow me on, uh, on Instagram. And thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Peace.